Let me get started. I'm David Duncan. There you go. There it is. Oaxaca. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just want to tell you that I am so proud of us for, for having done what we needed to do to get to uh, the status for cloud edition. Um, I'm David Duncan. If, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm pretty passionate about the cloud and passionate about uh, Fedora on the cloud, uh, on all of the cloud, all of it. And um, so I love to spend my time working on it, love to spend my time talking to other people about it, love to make sure that it's getting the attention that, you know, it really deserves. So um, I just want everyone to know that we're not all about just, you know, some basic change proposals or and, and putting some disk files out into the world. We're really trying to work with a lot of other teams. Um, first of all, the infrastructure team um, to work on security bugs, working with Mindshare team, and uh, as well, hoping, looking really forward to uh, working with the marketing team in this, uh, in their uh, sort of um, new ownership um, with Isa and, and Joseph uh, coming in to, to help where uh, Edward has done so much amazing work. We're working on community blogs now. Major Hayden is working on uh, one right now for the Fedora 37 release. You know, with making sure that the messaging is right for everyone to be able to spread the word about how it is that we fit into the world. Uh, and then working with uh, Samantro and Adam and and all and everyone who's been so amazing in the QA team uh, to help out in terms of that. And then another initiative that we have that hasn't gotten a lot of traction just yet, but is something that I feel very passionately about, is ensuring that we have a place for packages that are specific to uh, cloud environments to land and for us to have some discussions, some uh, basically some requirements for how those are marshaled as they go into the Fedora experience. A lot of, we've, we've run into a lot of complications in doing packaging where we have multiple uh, Python environments or complications around the licensing. Maybe we find out that there's a binary file in the middle of some of the, the applications that we want to pack, that we want to uh, package. And so one of the things that the cloud team wants to do or working group wants to do is to make sure that we have some specific guidelines and that those guidelines for modifying cloud images. And we have, uh, we have a preliminary set of those guidelines that we uh, published last month. And uh, make sure that those guidelines are established so that we can uh, work with the uh, cloud providers and other and explain to other groups why or why not uh, we plan to uh, include the work that they've done inside of the Fedora Cloud environment. Now, a lot of this is driven by the fact that we have we have an active relationship with uh, all, I mean, as many cloud providers as we possibly can, and I'll show some of that later. We want to make sure that we're all being good uh, internet citizens and taking care of Inside of the team, you see that as us looking at how we can <clears throat> transition off of some of the old, old tool sets. Image Factory is one that is based on Python 2.7, and it's been a little bit more complicated than we wanted, to, um, wanted it to be to move or, or to update Image Factory. So we're moving off of Image Factory. And there was originally, year, this is years ago, originally, uh, a discussion around moving to CoreOS Assembler. Um, we wanted to continue to use Python. Um, the tools that we found in MASH and Kiwi seem to work extremely well for what we wanted to do. Uh, so we're transitioning uh, off of Image Factory onto um, MASH for the uploads and, and uh, deployments into, into the cloud environments. Diff many different cloud environments it supports a lot. And we're talking with the MASH team 
about how we can separate out all of the different cloud providers into plugins so that we can leverage plugins instead of having to have uh, support for everything. Like I just mentioned in, in the context of packaging, we found uh, we found some complications around the way that we, you know, that, that uh, lots of these cloud provider um, libraries work, and so there are some that we can easily bring in, and there are some that we can't easily bring in, and there doesn't seem to be uh, a reasonable enough consistency for us to use um, uh, sort of a third-party attempt at uh, unifying the APIs just yet. So MASH. Uh, does a pretty good job of, of handling that uh, from the perspective of upload and and managing environments that we may not know about tomorrow. And it also gives us help in doing that management. Uh, Kiwi is already being integrated. Thank you, Neil uh, and Fabian, for, for all the uh, heavy lifting that you've done in terms of getting that done with the, or getting that integrated through the CPE. And <clears throat> Uh, I think that you know that's um, that's ongoing work. We're, we're we're getting to a spot. I think we're getting to a much more positive spot, um, and you can see that in the work that's going on with the hyperscale SIP in in CentOS. We're actively transitioning all of the wiki documentation off to Fedora Docs. We really want to move over to the Docs experience more than we do uh, anything. I mean, more really more than anything right now I think that the moving the docs and, and enhancing the documentation is, is probably one of our uh, our biggest needs biggest milestones really the Azure community marketplace we've been working pretty closely with the Azure team to to discuss how we could get the uh, the, the um, Azure agent integrated into the the images and we came up with some things that needed to be done we talked about this with the engineering committee and and uh, and this has been a, a complicated uh, experience I think I have another slide on this we'll go into that but uh, right now we're working on getting the fedora 36 images up and we want to continue that up to uh, 37. For Google, uh, for the Google Cloud Platform, we have images now for the Fedora 37 beta that are there and ready for you to test. And uh, they've been verified uh, through our own tests inside of the um, inside of Fedora test, and um, and we're we're working on that. And like I said, we're working on the packaging. And uh, one of the big things, Major Hayden again is working on, is the packager dashboard, so that we have uh, we have a group. Um, experience for packaging, similar to the way that the Neural Fedora team has it. All right, so I'm excited because Fedora 37 uh, brings us uh, the Cloud Edition, and this has been a long time um, action for many of us in the in the working group. Uh, what does what does that mean? Well, we create. You know, we're working to create these base images and to maintain the, the kickstarts that build those and, um, in, the, um, in the Fedora uh, build environment. And that means maintaining the vagrant uh, configurations, um, doing some work to support container-based applications uh, in this uh, uh, space, having a Fedora packaging strategy and a model for uh, integrating uh, into the cloud experience and the and the, the cloud base images, the applications and packages that um, might need to have better um, where the upstream community might need to have a better understanding of what it is that we need, and then having a platform strategy just generally for uh, what it is that we want to do. One of my favorite uh, engineers, um, arch slash architects, um, James Hamilton said. Uh, that we always have to be working to the next level of abstraction, and so we want to carry that practice in through what it is that we've been doing as well. And just to show you kind of a hierarchy of how I see this uh, experience happening for, for us, we have this package repository, and I feel like the Fedora Cloud Edition kind of sits in this place along with the server and workstation where we're leveraging the same, immediately the same package repository. And so the experience is kind of crossed over 
from the feeling of what you might get in workstation versus what you might get in server. And uh, with, without the uh, expectation that we're creating something that is 100% immutable. Right? So rather than focusing on the, the space that I think is, is central to what Fedora, the Fedora Core OS edition is doing, and I'm super excited about their, about their establishment as an addition, just as much as I am with Fedora Cloud, that, uh, that we're focused on having this experience that kind of crosses over what you would, what you would expect from on-premises experience, right? So while Fedora Core OS is moving over into that space where they support um, you know, the, the uh, Kubernetes experience, uh, Fedora Cloud is, is establishing kind of a configuration for tools and developer experience and workspace and then I've got a little bit more information on where we're going, but I kind of wanted to show you that there was a method to our madness and that we're not just talking about uh, doing duplicated duty for uh, where Fedora 4 OS is going. But you can see here, so this is, um, I actually used the, an example here that I think is really important and it's, uh, it's born out of um, some of the, exper the early experimentation I did um, with my team and and uh, and some people at Red Hat to build out an experience for um, the workstation environment in in uh, uh, Amazon Web Services in the Amazon EC2 specifically, where we took content that we knew was going to be uh, delivered by uh, or going to be needed for people who were building out uh, virtual desktop integration. And we built out, we collaborated on building out this uh, this configuration. Similarly, you know, there are parts of Workstation that work that are fundamental, fundamentally beneficial to users of, say, an accelerated GPU instance in the cloud, right? Where whatever cloud that is, versus you know having a super benefit for running components that would normally be considered to be a part of server inside of the cloud, but also wanting to maintain that uh, that lightweight, lighter weight, more minimal image. Uh, I see this fitting extremely well into uh, the Cloud9 experience uh, in the Fedora Cloud variety. So I said this is a little earlier, I think more, um, we're in pursuit of more policy management, we're, we're integrating our, tool, our tools that we've identified as being beneficial and also uh, co-maintained by other um, other uh, sort of peer organizations that are that are doing some of this work. The OpenSUSE team works hard on Mash, uh, and I think that uh, you know we're ultimately better together in the context of how it is that we make those make those tools work. The policy management I think is really important for us because. There are a lot of things that lead us into the experience uh, or lead us into a place where we could sort of complacently say, okay, well, it's only for this environment, right? But then it turns out that it's really, you know, a complication that we all want to, um, we all want to try and avoid because we are an open source community and we want to maintain that open source experience. We don't want to just give in. We want to make sure that we're letting everyone know that we're expecting a lot of help and and, and a lot of collaboration uh, so that we can all create incredibly easy to maintain and easy to use images inside of our um, inside of that cloud experience um, for right now we're really we're really focused in on you know, targeted on, on the experience around x86-64 and arc-64. But we do have friends who are helping us to build out the support for the S390X and the uh, CPE team. And we look forward to maybe extending that out to the PowerPC work that's being done uh, as well. So when you look at how these things are working, these are the, this is kind of what it is that we're, we're moving towards. And in the context of the, G, uh, of the Google Cloud environment, we, have, we already had the guest agent in place, and there was a policy exception that was created for that through, 
your FESCO, we currently have been going through that same thing with the Azure VM agent and some changes were made, uh, or some changes were requested upstream, those changes were refused, and our expectation is that from now on we'll have a patch, we'll carry some patches for, uh, for a virtualization condition in the context of the, um, the RPM. Um, but first, our plan is to push up cloud init only um, supported images into Azure, and then later we'll uh, be able to make that work. And then we want to be ready for whatever the next environment is. If you're listening to this and you think that there is an, an application or an, a space that you want to include Fedora in, then and, and you don't think we're doing a good job of that today, then I look forward to us uh, collaborating on making sure that that's available in the environment that you expect it to be in, involved in. And also look forward to your assistance in, in getting that done. Where, you know, the whole concept around the package dashboard and integration is that we have a team and that team is really focused in on packaging. One of the things that I learned myself as someone who is packaging uh, software is that there are a lot of times where there's a strict dependency uh, around some other group's requirements and that you may find yourself in a position where the initiative is really a team initiative and not really an individual experience. And we want to make sure that that, that, that is possible for, for the packages that we're responsible for. Uh, I learned it in the context of the AWS, the first version of the AWS CLI, so Kevin justifiably tired of, of making it work for himself. And, uh, but, it came, but it seemed to be more important more importantly, depended upon some relationships with other software. And then it turned out that there were some other people who were working on this uh, who were incredibly better at the at packaging and automating their packaging process. And so we're able to make much better decisions and I've learned a lot from you know from being a part of that. So uh, I'm not I'm not saying that I had a terrible experience, I'm saying I had a great experience and, and that ultimately meant that um, we all got what we needed. And then we have some other things that are, you know, that we've, uh, that we have as sort of basic packages. One of those is uh, the common C libraries for, for uh, AWS, the Hibernate agent, the, uh, the GCP guest agent, and uh, Windows VM agent are, have been, you know, we've invited them to take part in, in what it is that we're trying to do with package dashboard integration. It still remains that we need assistance with vagrant testing. Uh, I don't feel like we're getting enough uh, vagrant testing right now with cloud images. And uh, our process for, for scheduling the Fedora cloud images has been a little bit short. And looking forward to making that a more consistent uh, providing a more consistent schedule around that and specifically sort of working backwards from our release dates and then finding ways for us to ensure that we're getting that done with uh, scheduling and, and, um, uh, and uh, engagement inside of our meeting, meeting experience. Oh, and on the, I'm just going to keep this up and say, with vagrant testing, we really need help with people who are uh, excited about using VirtualBox. The libvirt stuff is pretty well tested. The problem that we run into is that not a lot of us have uh, VirtualBox up as a, uh, as a as a working environment. And so if you're using VirtualBox today, we need you for this testing process. And if there's something we can do to make it easier for you, like in terms of automation, or uh, sort of structure, then please let me know and, and we'll uh, or, or attend one of the cloud SIG meetings and we'll gladly you know, work directly with you. Um, we look forward to that. From the context of enablement, um, we look forward to uh, increasing the popularity. We want to build better uh, Butterfest uh, knowledge inside of the community and, and, and help people to understand what, make, what makes that a great part of our part of the experience. So I told you that documentation I thought was our biggest milestone. These are some of the things that I think are really important for us. So looking back here, I'm going to kind of ask some questions like, how do I use cloud native file system operations for Fedora Cloud Edition with ButterFS? I really think that's a companion guide that we need, right? 
Um, and that's something that I think is really important. Like a basic user's guide is something that we think uh, we want to, you know, we want to fill out and uh, love to have your feedback on what it is that you think it, it should 100%, you know, uh, include. But inside of that document, we want to make sure that we're providing an understanding of where the, the, uh, the images are available, what special settings you might need, like um, I'm going to give you an example, which is that the NVMe timeout is very much extended uh, inside of the Amazon environment. And there are other requirements around modifications that probably would be better suited towards like a, a Linux system role, uh, but we're not there yet. And it'd be great to have those documented so that when someone uh, in the system roles team is looking for uh, information, they have sort of a one-stop shop uh, to determine how it is they're going to make it work. And then to have these companion guides that tell you how you know how to use these, uh, how to use Fedora in the context of sort of broader tools. Um, I used uh, GCP and AWS Batch as examples because they are high performance computing environments and places where people like to do big experiments. And then things that we're working on, you know, is, uh, IDE integration for specifically for Cloud9 under AWS. Um, working on uh, Neuro Fedora cloud spin so that we can use that with the accelerated instances and create an opportunity for people to um, uh, to do some really cool work. And I think it'd be great if we could at some point support uh, Secure Boot. And then super highlight, I'm so excited about this, is that we have new artwork that uh, Maureen and team have created for us. Um, Go Mo, thank you very much. Basically overnight, um, Maureen has, has given us um, some content, uh, and we're, and more is coming, right? And so we have uh, others on the design team who are who are working to provide us additional artwork for for our documentation and um, and, the, and other pages. Uh, but this uh, rocket off the ISO is the ready to use images. Here we have agility and flexibility uh, expressed in. Um, in this highly selective tool. The concept of being able to use cloud all the way out to the edge um, where you know the IoT edition will take over is super exciting for us. Just put that back so you can see it for just one more second. And so I'm grateful for all of you for coming and listening to me talk about cloud. It is something that I'm uh, super excited about and uh, I just want to say a big thank you to you for being here and then also to people like Neil and Michelle and Davida and uh, Chris Murphy, Christopher Murphy, and um, so many others. Dusty, uh, couldn't do this without you. This has been such a great experience for me as a member of the community that uh, just wouldn't trade it. And so many others, just want to say. Yeah. So I see Neil provided a question here in the Q&A. So I'll start with that. How do you envision Fedora Cloud desktop images would be used? And how do you see providing a differentiated offering there? So first off, I, I mean, I love what we've done with the, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux workstation edition on top of uh, Amazon. That was like a super experience for me, but it didn't happen overnight. It happened because I was doing experimentation with both Fedora and with the CentOS so that I could uh, to find out where it was that uh, I could um, I could leverage the nice DCV packages, which was a free, as in uh, beer, <laughs> not free as in freedom, uh, um, VDI solution that was available. And then, um, and then to figure out, to determine how I could use the GPUs on top of uh, on top of the instances. Fedora gives us the opportunity to look at next generation software opportunities there and to understand better how it is that, you know, um, we can build out solutions that then may translate into something that is very much an enterprise offering. So I see this as being a way to experience next generation technology in the context of what we think will be the next generation products. For, for me, 
it's a user experience and finding out a way for a user to experiment in ways that they wouldn't normally do and then uh, go back and apply those or bring them back to the to their commercial experience. Oh, one more slide, just real quick. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, here are all the links. We're on Fedora Cloud. We're on IRC. We're on Matrix. Uh, we have a Cloud Sick meeting that is biweekly. Uh, we have an issue tracker in Pagger, and um, we look forward to uh, to connecting with you everywhere. Thanks, everybody.